Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 10th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today, of course, top of the news, Microsoft's patch Tuesday. We got patches for a total of 129 different vulnerabilities. 11 of them were rated critical and the remaining 118 were rated important. So overall, this looks kind of like an average patch Tuesday if it wouldn't be for CVE 2020-1206. This is an uninitialized kernel memory read for SMB version 3 and has already been named by the Discover SecOps uh, SMB lead. So what's so bad about this? Uh, well, essentially it allows you to read arbitrary kernel memory and a proof of concept exploit has already been released by SecOps. Of course, earlier this year, we had a well, somewhat similar uh, vulnerability that led uh, to remote code execution, and that was SMB Ghost CVE 2020-0796. Same function, actually. Both of these vulnerabilities only affect SMB version 3 and affect the compression feature in SMB version 3. SMB Ghost, the earlier vulnerability, led to code execution, of course, more severe in that sense. And well, we got actually just a proof of concept exploit for this one last week. The new vulnerability SMPLEAT does leak kernel memory. So in essence, it's a little bit uh, like, of course, Heartbleed, the famous uh, open SSL vulnerability. But here we get kernel memory, not memory from a specific process. So those two vulnerabilities actually sort of go together uh, because with SMPLEAT, you can leak kernel memory, which then allows you to actually exploit SMB Ghost. And with exploits being available for both, that certainly isn't a good thing. So what should you do about it? Well, first of all, I hope you block port 445 on your parameter. I keep saying this. And earlier today, when I sort of was commenting on the SMB ghost proof of concept in Newsbyte, that's of the one thing I again pointed out. Now, if you still have compression disabled in SMB version 3, that was one of the workarounds for the SMB ghost vulnerability, then you are actually still good. Then just leave that disabled. It may give you a couple percent of performance increase, but probably not worth the trouble. Even if you patch, who knows what other vulnerabilities lurk in this particular feature. So next thing, of course, patch. Certainly patch, make sure your systems are updated. These two vulnerabilities together are a real big problem. And even SMPLEAT by itself in it leaking kernel memory is not a good thing and something you should certainly take serious. Two other noteworthy vulnerabilities are your classic sort of client-side vulnerabilities. Uh, Windows graphic device interface vulnerability can lead to code execution as well as remote code execution in Windows OLE. Uh, either one of these vulnerabilities requires that the user opens a malicious file or visits a malicious website. Yes, take them serious, but it's at this point sort of run of the mill client side vulnerabilities. And this month we also got again an update for Adobe Flash and that update is also included in this Microsoft update. Now, as far as the Adobe patches go, the Flash Player update that we got fixes a single critical vulnerability that can be used for arbitrary code execution. So your average Adobe Flash Player flaw. We also got patches for Adobe Experience Manager as well as for Adobe FrameMaker. And not sort of a usual participant in Patch Tuesday, 
Intel released a number of updates, some of them affecting Intel AMT, which is their active management technology yet again. Now, one particular one, I believe, sort of caught my eye here. That's CVE 2020-0594. This is an out-of-bounds read in the IPv6 subsystem of Intel AMT, and this can be used for privilege escalation via network access. What sort of caught my eye here is that, first of all, this is part of the IPv6 subsystem, and secondly, that according to Intel, well, turning on IPv6 is not part of the standard configuration, which caused Intel to rate this a bit lower in the CVSS score. Same is also true for a second vulnerability, and uh, this is CVE 2020-0595, and other approach escalation via network access that's uh, in the IPv6 subsystem. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget, today on Wednesday, we have Jim Clausing speaking about uh, shellcode analysis 101. That's a sans at mic talk and uh, it'll start at 15.30 Eastern or 19.30 UTC. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow.